Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I will show you how to create a hair shader in Unreal Engine. You can either design your character's hair from scratch or like I mentioned in my last video, using the hair assets from Paragon project and apply them to your character. Once we have imported the hair mesh into Unreal, I will walk you through how to build a simple hair shader to make the hair look great. We will start by creating a new material setting the blend mode to masked and select the shading mode to hair. Using the masked mode is much more performance friendly than translucent mode because the shader only considering each pixel as either fully opaque or fully transparent. It skips the blending of alpha values with other polygons which reduce the render time and improve performance. The hair shading mode provides additional outputs in the material node designed especially to help with rendering hair. I will guide you through each of these output nodes step by step, so you can create an understandable shader and can apply to your game. First, we need to bring in an opacity mask to define where the hair should appear transparent. In this grayscale texture, white pixels represent a value of 1 fully opaque, and black pixel represent 0 fully transparent. Since it's a grayscale image, each channel carries the same information. We will connect the red channel to the opacity mask node, which will instruct the shader on how to handle transparency. By default, the clip value is set to 0.3, meaning that any pixels with a value higher than 0.3 will be rendered as a peak. Anything below that will be rep represent transparent. Create a material instance and apply it to our hair mesh. From here, we can test and refine the shader as we progress in creating our hair material. Let's expose the base color, scatter, specular, and roughness nodes as parameters in our material instance. The scatter material looks similar to the metallic node in standard PBR shaders. A value closer to 0 will make the material appear more metallic, while a value closer to 1 will match the material's color more closely to the base color. Specular controls the intensity of the specular reflections on the surface. The roughness input controls how rough or smooth a material's surface is. Now, if you look at real hair, you will notice how light reflects along the surface, creating a nice highlight along the strands. To replicate this effect, we can use the tangent node. The tangent node tells the shader the direction of the hair strands along the mesh surface. In our texture map, the strands follow the V directions, so we can create a vector 3 in the values 0, 1, 0 to indicate that the normal directions is along the y-axis. Connect this to the tangent node. Now, if you check the result, you will see a nice highlight reflections along the direction of the hair strands. If you are using metahuman hair, they provide a tangent map along with other maps. You can connect the tangent map directly to the tangent output node for more accurate results. Now, let's enhance the hair color by allowing separate control over root and tip colors in our shader. To achieve this, we will use a hair root mask, where the black represents the root and the white represents the tip. We can use the lerp node along with this mask to blend the colors. Start by creating two color parameters, root color and tip color. Connect this to lerp node and use any channel of the root mask as the alpha input. Then connect the output to the base color. This setup allows us to define distinct colors for the hair root and tips. To further refine, 
This effect, we can adjust the mask to increase the area representing the roots and add more contrast. Add a parameter to control the power of the mask texture. This will let you modify the black region. You can also use a cheap contrast node to make the con tra transitions between roots and tips colors more noticeable. Additionally, introduce a scalar parameter to control the overall brightness. Since the pure black and white can cause rendering issues, we should clamp the output color slightly away from pure black and white for better results. With these adjustments, we now have a greater control over the hair color. Now let's take a look at the pixel depth offset node. The value for pixel depth offset determines how far the current pixel can be pushed inward away from the camera. By increasing this value, the pixel moves further inside. So if we create a mask that defines the depth of each hair strand pixel, we can use that depth information to enhance the hair shader helping it correctly render which strand should appear in front of others. All Paragon characters and the metahuman hair assets include a depth texture specially for this purpose. Here's the depth texture I'm using for this hair. As you can see, each strand is represented by grayscale values. The darker the color, the further behind that strand is relatively to strengths with lighter colors. Now, let's add this texture into our shader. First, we need to reverse the grayscale values by using one minus mode node, because we want the darker area to push further away from the camera. Next, we will multiply this by a pixel depth scalar and uh, connect the result to the tech pixel depth offset node. With pixel depth offset applied, the hair appear looks much better, especially along the edges of the face. However, there are still some hard edges and areas with solid colors. To soften the strands around the face and make them look more natural, we can use the Desert Temple AA node. This node generates a subtile dot pattern based on screen space. With default output values ranging from 0.5 to 1, we will combine the desert output with our depth mask to smooth the strength and uh, subtract 0.5 to set the output range from 0 to 1.5. Then we will multiply this by our depth power parameter. Now let's check the result. You can see that uh, the edges of the hair are much softer with no more hard lines around the face. Now that we have created a solid hair shader for rendering our hair cuts, I'm going to add one more final control parameter to wrap up this tutorial. I have applied the same shader to the beard as well, and I want to be able to control the thickness of the beard, similar to how Arthur's beard grows over time in Red Dead Redemption. To achieve this, we can add a scalar parameter that multiplies with our opacity mask By adjusting the thickness values, the shader will control how long or short the beard appears.
we can also integrate some calculations based on camera angle into the AO node and add a simple hair wave animation by driving values into the word position offset node. We could also refine the opacity node to smooth out the transparency, which would further enhance the overall visual quality of the hair rendering. But I will be saving those topics for a future tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope this video provides some helpful insights you can apply to your own game. I will continue making some more tutorials as I working on my game, and I hope to see you in my next video.